Hello and welcome to practicum number 5, Statistical Inference. This one's going to be all about linear regression, which is chapter 13. How do we know this is going to be linear regression? Well, let's look at the research question. The research question is, if we know that December 10th, 2016, we will have 102 customers, what is the expected net profit for that day? Number of customers is a numeric variable. Net profit is a numeric variable. So what we're doing here is we're using a numeric variable to predict the value of another numeric variable. And that's linear regression, numeric variable versus numeric variable. So this is going to be linear regression, again, chapter 13. First question we're going to have to deal with is what data we're going to use. Are we going to use all of the data points, or are we just going to narrow it down to, say, December? Now, reasonable people will disagree on this, but I'm going to say use all the data. Here's why. There's really nothing special about December 10th. It's a day like any other. And we're not actually trying to predict the net profit given no additional information. We're trying to predict a net profit given the number of customers. So in other words, we're trying to ask ourselves, is December 10th different in terms of that relationship between customers and net profit? And I'm not convinced it is. If this were Thanksgiving Day, yeah, you could make an argument that there's going to be a different relationship between customers and net profit. In other words, a given number of customers is going to give a significantly different net profit for that day. But for December 10th, nah, it's just a typical day. So I'm going to use all of the data. Now that we are decided we're going to use all the data, here's all the data. This is from the Lamplighter sales. And we're going to focus on just two columns. We're going to focus on the net profit and the number of customers. So let's create a new sheet within this. Let's see if I can type today. So the x variable is number of customers. So I'm going to copy that over. And the y variable is the net profit. How do we know that the y variable is the net profit? Well, according to our pro uh, research question, we're trying to predict the net profit, which means that's going to be our y variable. What you predict is always going to be the y variable. So the quick and easy way to get the regression line, we're just going to insert a chart. It's going to be a scatter plot. We're going to add something to that. The most important thing we're going to add is that trend line. linear trend line, display the equation on the chart, and the R squared value. I'm going to move that chart to a different sheet. I'm going to gussy it up a little bit, make that a little bit bigger, get rid of that title. This is going to be number of customers. And this will be net profit. Those are kind of small, so I'll make them bigger as well. So each dot represents a day. Vertically, that day is that dot is going to be the net profit for the day. Horizontally, it's going to be the number of customers that day. So, for instance, the dot that I'm pointing at had 290 customers, a net profit of $5,222. Here's the line of best fit. I'm going to copy that and put it here. I'm going to put it all the way over here. So that's our line of best fit. And that helps us with the prediction. So how does it help us with the prediction? Well, we're given the x value is equal to 102 customers. So the y hat, that's just going to equal 12.965 times that x minus 265.88. Point, point 
So the expected number, uh, I'm sorry, the expected net profit for December 10th is going to be 1,056. And we could make that in dollars if we want. So that's the first part. Calculating the expected net profit given 102 customers. The difficult part is going to get a confidence interval for that prediction. I mean, this is the point estimate. We need a confidence interval because there is uncertainty in this estimate. We need to express that uncertainty. Confidence intervals for those uh, predictions are on page 560, or the formula for them are on page 560. So I'm going to go page 560. There's that box there. And we've got to figure out which of those two formulas we're going to need. The top one is for a confidence interval. bottom one is for a prediction interval. Since I specified a confidence interval, we're going to do the top one. In order to calculate that confidence interval, let's look at that formula. We need a y hat. Oh, we got that. We need a t value. We're going to calculate that pretty soon. We need s. We need n. We need x naught. Well, we've got that x naught up here. It's 102. We need x bar. And we need ssxx. OK, so let's write down everything that we need. We need an n. Um, for that t, we're going to need a number of degrees of freedom. We need fingers to help me type. Uh, x bar we need. Uh, we need s. We need ssxx. OK. So as usual, we'll calculate the number of data points. OK, there's 700 data points. Degrees of freedom for this is n minus 2. So that's equal to n minus 2. So the t value is going to be t dot inv dot 2t. And it's a 95% confidence interval. So that value is going to be 0.05. The probability would be 0.05. Degrees of freedom will be that 698. It's so close to that 1.96 that we would get if we used the z, but it's not the same. x bar, this is just going to be average of the a column. s, ooh, what is s? Well, let's go back through chapter 13 and see if we can find out what s is. And looking and looking, and I'm on page 550. On page 550, I see a formula for S. S is equal to the square root of SSE over n minus 2. So that means we're going to have to calculate SSE. Well, let's calculate SSE. Well, let's not do that yet. We also need SSXX. I'm not sure what SSXX is. Oh, it's here on page 536. And then SSEE, -E, same page, page 536. OK, so we're good. So what should we calculate first? We're going to calculate first the SSXX, just for the fun of it. According to the box on page 536, SSXX is just the sum of the x's minus the mean squared. So let's set this up. This will be the xi minus the x bar column. And this will be uh, that squared. So this is xi, that's x1, minus the average of the a column. And this will be that number to the power of 2 squared copy and let's just scroll to the bottom of the data where we're going to paste. So this D column is going to be the XI minus the X bar. This E column is going to be the square of that. So the SSXX is just going to equal the sum of the E column. And that's SSXX. SSE, sum of squared errors, if we look at 
above the box, it's going to be the sum of the y's minus the predicted y squared. So this will be the yi minus y hat, hat, minus y hat. And this will just be the square of that. Well, what is y i, I mean, what is y hat? Okay, so we need to calculate y hat. Y hat is just equal to 12.965 times the x value minus 265.88. That's y hat. Y i minus y hat is equal to that net profit minus that prediction. And the squared is equal to that value to the power of 2. Copy and paste down. So the SSE is just equal to the sum of that I column. Which brings us back to the S and page 550. If we go to page 550, we see that S is just equal to the square root of the SSE divided by the degrees of freedom, n minus 2. Move all these to the right. Okay. And that means that according to the formula on page 560, the lower confidence limit is equal to y hat minus that t value times s times the square root of 1 over n plus x naught minus x bar the power of 2 divided by SSXX. Boom. And the upper confidence limit that's just going to equal y hat plus everything I just said. So it's y hat plus the t value times s times the square root of 1 divided by n plus x naught minus x bar squared divided by ssxx. So we're 95% confident that the expected net profit given 102 customers is between $998.86 and $1,114.24. So let's see how we got here. We needed a confidence interval for our, our estimated expected value. According to the formula on page 560, this was equal to y hat, so we need to know y hat. Plus and minus that t value. Well, there's the t value. In order to get the t value, we needed the number of degrees of freedom, which is just n minus 2. Times s. Well, here's s. Not sure what s is, so let's search through chapter 13. We come to page 550, and we see the formula for s. The formula for s is just the square root of the SSE over the degrees of freedom. SSE we found back on page 536, which is just the sum of the y hat minus yi squared. So we created a column of the y hats. And the y hat is just 12.965 times the x value. And for the first y hat, it's going to be 116 minus 265.88. yi minus y hat, squared it, added it up to get the sum of the squared errors, the SSE. SSE divided by the degrees of freedom, 
square rooted gives us the S. And for our confidence interval, we also needed SSXX. Found that on page 536 as well. SSXX is just the sum of the XI minus the X bar squared. So we create a column of the XI minus the X bar, column of the squared, and the SSXX is just the sum of that E column. And with all that information, we were able to put it together into a formula for the lower level, the lower limit, and the upper limit. The lower limit is 998.86. The upper limit is 1114.24. So we're 95% confident that the true expected net profit given 102 customers is between $998.86 and $1,114.24. And the important part about this, this practicum is that it brought us, started at, at page 560, and we broke down the confidence interval into each of its parts, and we put it together into a very complicated but very useful formula in Excel. I'm sure there are packages that you could buy and install into Excel to make this a little bit easier, but this shows you the process behind the, the calculations. So hopefully this video was helpful. Take care of yourself, and good luck on the final exam. Bye.